Hi folks, I'm back with yet another video on the BBC Microbit microcontroller that I've been having a lot of fun with over the past couple of weeks. You can see that uh, I've attached some crocodile clips here to the bottom. On the other end of that they are attached to a little NeoPixel array which I purchased for uh, under five pounds. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I what I think is uh, the best game that I've programmed so far. And it's loosely based on Ridley Scott's Alien movie. <laughs> so you might wonder, how can you do Alien on 25 pixels? Um, well, I decided to make it a multi-room game. So you, you can have the walls around the edge and uh, you can move from room to room. So. I had 49 rooms in total programmed in an array of 7x7 seven seven. and somewhere in those rooms is the alien. Okay, so here we have Ripley in the center of the screen. The flashing dot indicates the direction that the alien is. It's sort of your motion tracker if you like. So you can move from room to room by tilting the micro bit using the accelerometer. That dot that you see on the screen, that was a lucky find. That is the self-destruct button. But I'm not going to press it just yet because I have no idea where the escape pod is and I need to know the location of those two things. Oh boy, the alien is directly to the right of me. Uh, it could be two rooms away, it could be four rooms away. <laughs> you can't quite tell. And he's moving about as well, so he changes his room position every uh, seven or eight seconds. So let's just have a walk around here and see if I can locate the escape pod. The escape pod, the player position, the alien position and the self-destruct button position are all random each time you start the games. Just so, just so it can throw you off a little bit and make every game a little bit different. And in a moment you'll see what the uh, NeoPixel array is used for. Oh, I'm not going around in circles here. Oh, there you go. When it lights up red like that, that means the alien is in the very next room. And at any moment he could enter your room and kill you. <laughs> which means instant death, so you do not want to be in the same room as the alien. Run away, run away. <laughs> I know I'm. It's, it, the alien does move randomly, but it does feel at times <laughs> like it's actually stalking you. Uh, but as the programmer, I know that's not true. <laughs> but it's a nice illusion that it gives. Come on, where's this... Uh, where is this escape pod? I don't want to go up here, but I think I have to. There's the button. Okay, um, let's just press it and go for it. Self-destruct in 60. And that Lighting up in green is the clock. One of those LEDs will disappear every 10 seconds as the countdown progresses. There's 50 seconds you're at right now. Where's this X? There it is, the X in the center of the screen. That is the, the uh, escape pod. And smiley face, game over. And as you can see, two of the LEDs have disappeared, indicating that I had 40 seconds left on the clock. Here's another game that I was playing. Uh, this is just me narrating over the top of it. This uh, isn't in real time. Um, we're halfway through the game here at the moment where I've just activated the self-destruct. And I already know at this point that the exit, the escape pod is at the far left hand side of the map. I had to go right initially because uh, there was no other way across the map. So here I go now over to the left hand side. It's quite a distance, so I'm going to be pressed for time. We're already down to 40 seconds if you look at the timer. Now what's really interesting here, uh, you'll see it in a moment, is that the alien is exactly in my way. We're almost there. 
Now, it's right to the north. The alien is directly to north, and so is the escape pod. And I can't get to it. And when I go, he's in the next room. You see the red timer just went off. I can't get to it. So I'm waiting for him to move off to the side. He might move to the south, but he moved to the side. And out of time, just couldn't make it in time. So that was an interesting ending. The Python program listing for the game you've just seen, as well as a tutorial for how to create it, uh, will be part of a book that I've been writing for the past few weeks on how to develop games in Python for the BBC Microbit. The Microbit is new and there are no printed resources available for it yet, so I'm hoping to get in early and maybe attract the attention of a publisher. So if any publishers out there are interested in something like this, please do get in touch with me.